Is Warlock still the undisputed Eldritch High Lord of D&D casters? Find out in Green and Garb's review of the 2024 Player's Handbook. What's going on, YouTube? My name is Dr. DM. And I'm Kyle, the Mind Flayer Slayer. And today we're bringing you an exclusive world first review of the D&D 2024 Player's Handbook Warlock Class. And before we get started, we're issuing you a challenge. Challenge accepted. Ooh. Anytime during this video, we want you to go down to the comments and let us know which of us do you think would be playing a warlock. If you get it right, we'll come back in a few weeks and heart your comment. Okay, so you're probably all familiar with the 2014 version of the Warlock. What we're gonna do here is first break down the differences between 2014 and 2024, and we're gonna address every single change at every level and see how it fares, so take it away. Starting with Eldritch Invocations, you can now select one invocation starting at level one. The former Pact Boons are now invocations. You can select one at level one, and you are no longer limited to just one Pact Boon as you level up. That's right. So what this means is that the Pact Boons, which is previously a whole nother line of bonuses, let's say, for mm. Warlock, right? Like Pact of the Chain, Pact of the Blade, probably one of the most popular. Absolutely. Uh, pa uh, Pact of the Tome, right? Those are now baked into invocations, all just invocations, right? So you could actually as you level up as Warlock, you can take Pact to the Blade and Pact to the Tome and Pact to the Chain, right? All of those. Or you can select the other invocations like Thirsting Blade and so forth, uh, and you get one at level one. Uh, and as you level up, you actually get more total. You end up with 10 uh, instead of previously yeah. eight. It's pretty exciting. Cantrip buffing uh, invocations is also a huge level up. No longer are you limited to using only Eldritch Blast. That means things like Repelling Blast is not specific to your Eldritch Blast. If you are doing a damage dealing cantrip, you are allowed to use these buffs. Right, and then of course, what is one of the strongest Cantrips, maybe Toll of the Dead, right? There's a D12. Well, now, if you don't want to just be an Eldritch Blasting all the time, which is good because it has different rays, but if you just Very want good. to do big damage, for example, with Toll of the Dead, you can have the Agonizing Blast focus on that. Maybe you're a Warlock that focuses on fire, right? And you can do that for Firebolt, right? Whatever it's going to be, now the ball is in your court for making a cantrip be your most powerful weapon as a warlock. Absolutely. Okay, and now at level two, your feature is Magical Cunning. So once per long rest, you can complete a one minute ritual to restore half of your maximum packed magic spell slots. And then at 20th level, it restores all of your packed magic spell slots. Now, Warlock still only gets two and then three at level 11, so it's still a pretty limited it's resource. still a limited caster, but sure. you know, it's the best caster in my opinion. <laughs> well, so it's, you gotta balance it a little bit. Right, and they still always soar on a short rest. I personally wish they would have maybe like up those by maybe three to four what? to five or something, but it's staying. Maybe that's the other idea to balance, I'm not sure. But now it looks like you can still, once per long rest, get some of them back. It's only one when you're lower level because you restore half of them, so you'll get Correct. one when you have two. But it's something, right? So yeah. Warlock is still the premiere when you're doing some long dungeon crawling and you can take a bunch of short rests, right, throughout the day. And uh, you're gonna be able to you. just keep blasting. So starting at level three, just like every class now in the 2024 D&D Player's Handbook, you are gonna be getting your subclass. So that is for every class across the board. You will be choosing from the Archfey Patron, mm -hmm. the Celestial Patron, the Fiend Patron, and the Great Old One Patron. And these have all been buffed, I think. Quite uh, a bit. Quite a bit. Now, quite a bit. there's some features that maybe aren't quite as strong, but others have been pushed forward a lot, like the Fiend Patron, uh, the way they could banish somebody to hell. I think the damage has gone down a little bit. Anyway, there's a few things. We're going to talk about all the different subclasses in very rigorous detail in a future video. So, But for now, everything's at level three, including Warlock. So, okay. At level nine, the biggest change is the contact patron feature. And yes. th this is exciting, let me tell you. So once per long rest, uh, you can use contact other plane, the spell, to communicate directly with your patron. It automatically succeeds whenever saving throw is required for the spell. So you can talk with your patron whenever you want, more or less, it does take a minute to cast. Yes. But this is much better than previously where it was sort of like you had to go through your DM, right? And now yeah. it's in, the, now now it's it's in your hands as a player. Rules. I yeah. really like that. Yeah. I really like that. Can you imagine the role playing implications of this? I think it's wonderful. Oh, incredible. Because let's be honest, warlocks like to talk to their patrons. <laughs> Whether it's because they're like, I hate you, or they're like, <laughs> daddy oh, issues. Super sexy, or whatever it is, yeah. they want to talk to their patrons. Right. And having a rule that allows it to be a little bit more easily accessible, I think is a huge, huge Sure, thing. and at level nine too, because the 
clerics used to be able to contact their divine uh, god as well. So this might take away a little bit from that, but clerics have that ability also buffed. So I think that's okay there. 100%. So we'll talk about Mystic Arcanum at level 11. Yeah. The previous rule, so everyone knows how this works, right? You sort of get these, you can cast them once per day, right? And you, they get more they're and more They're your higher you level. They're basically like your higher level spell slots past level five. Yeah, but now we're getting the optional rule from Tasha's where it changes the Mystic Arcanum spells. When you level up, right? And you get mm -hmm. the Warlock Mystic Arcanum, you can choose ones from lower levels if you wanted to as well. Absolutely. And then at level 19, this is also something very exciting for all of our classes. You get an epic boon. Right. And now this is pretty high level, so I don't know the impact it's going to have on most games. Fair. Uh, but epic boons, I think, used to be level 20, under level 19. There's some pretty cool stuff in there. I wouldn't say it's like it's a like game breaking, but there's stuff, you know, give you a lot of hit points or let you do extra potent things. So. Yeah, absolutely. But here they are. And there's some more here in this book as well, the Epic Boon. So. Uh, 100%. All right, well, that's the changes to the main Warlock class. Of course, the Warlock has its four subclasses, as all the, all the other classes do as well. Some of them are, are pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Uh, right now, I am very impressed about how flexible uh, and how dynamic you can make your Warlock because you're not just like baked into, I have to be the Pact of the Blade, or I have to be the Pact of the Tome. If I'm Pact of the Tome, I don't get my second attack, I don't get Thirsting Blade, right? And I wanted to jump in on something with yeah. that. This is this is a change that might not be immediately apparent, but they've done away with the Hex Blade, and this might cause some concerns for people initially. But what they've done is they've made it possible, because let's be honest, the Hex Blade is the most broken Warlock mm -hmm. in the 2014 Player's Handbook. Um, and what they have done is they have now allowed every single warlock that wants to have the ability to be a hexblade without it being this weird subclass that doesn't really ever make sense is your is your patron the sword is it the thing that controls the sword or made the sword now through packs of the blade you get your Hexblade abilities. Yeah, and everyone is already based on Hexblade, so you are just the premier Gish class already. Honestly, if you've played Baldur's Gate 3, I'm sure many of you have, Pact of the Blade was already kind of like that. It, was, yeah. it wasn't your class, it was just one of the sort of invocation-y kind of things, but now it's actually an invocation. So I, what I like about that is that because everybody now can get Thirsting Blade, right? They also added a level up to that, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, called, where is it? Starts with a D, Devouring Blade. The extra attack of your Thirsting Blade Invocation now confers two extra attacks at level 12. So uh, before, the fighter was one of the main classes that would get three attacks when doing and its main action attack. Can. And now the Warlock can do it I'm on so top of that, on top of using all its other awesome abilities. So even if you do run out of your two or three spell slots at that level, uh, you can still go hard uh, with your weapon attacks. Attacking three times, incredible. It, it, it's mind-blowing. Yeah, a lot of these other invocations that were... Most beloved are back, Agonizing Blast, Elder Spear, they'll be able to see in Darkness, lots of other ones, as well as all the different packs are in here as well. I wouldn't say the list is as long as you may remember it from 2014, but I imagine as sourcebooks come out, uh, they said they're going to reincorporate a lot of the previous invocations, a lot of previous class abilities that weren't in the Player's Handbook 2024, so expect them to come back, probably buff to be honest. Well, and again, this book is backwards compatible. So if there is a Warlock subclass, and we'll be getting more to that later, mm -hmm. but if there is a subclass that you want to play that's from one of the other books, you're, and it's not here, you're still allowed to play it, but you can play it with the first part of the rules, which allows you to have all of these additional features and benefits. That's fantastic. All right, well, let's go now to, that was a review. You know, everything about the class other than the subclasses. What is your ranking and why? I mean, it's <laughs> S tier because it's a warlock. I'm just, I'm sorry. Everybody loves warlocks. Okay, I would probably, especially because some of the subclasses are pretty fantastic, because Devouring Blade, honestly, that sells it for me. Oh, Three 100%. attacks as a Gish. Can you imagine? Before you had to kind of multi-class to get that, right? If you want to do like Paladin and Sorcerer, like how many levels do I take a Paladin? Do I, where do I get yeah. an extra attack? That's always like a coveted thing. And getting three and getting uh, invocations earlier yeah. Right? It's incredible if you do want a multi-class, you get one right away. You can take back to the blade immediately at level one. Being able to have your cantrips be any cantrip, flexibility-wise, so good. S tier sounds right to me. Okay, and I've got to share one more thing. This is exciting across all classes. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things that the Player's Handbook 2024 is doing is, if you remember from the past of being a warlock, you had an expanded spell list, but unlike many expanded spell lists, you had to choose from the expanded spell list what spells you wanted to learn. Now, with every class and every subclass that has an expanded spell list option, 
you get all of those options as known prepared spells. So I think this is a lot more straightforward because it was always confusing when you were switching between classes. If you got them, if you didn't have them, having access to all of them is a huge, huge benefit. And it makes me more inspired to play the class because I don't have to just min max and choose the specific thing because sometimes those niche spells are the things that make a session the most exciting. For sure, including Contact Other Plane. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, well this has been a review of the 2024 Warlock. We love it. We are going to be bringing you videos on every class, every subclass, magic weapons, feats. We're gonna be bringing you a new video here at Green and Garb every, every day, day until we finish front to back an entire review it's of this dope. book. Okay. We're very excited. We hope you are too. Please like, comment, smite subscribe. that like button, subscribe. subscribe. I said that in the right oh, order. Did you? Okay. <laughs> Hey, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you soon for the first subclass for Warlock. Let's go.